Hey there, Steve from 3D Universe here, just to, here to show you um, how to use one of our latest scripts. This one's called Camera Follow Focus. Let's get into what it can do for you. We're going to start off just before we, uh, before I show you the actual script. I want to just show you how Day Studio handles depth of field. You'll see I have a very simple scene that I've set up here with a, a camera, a sphere, a cylinder, and a cube. And I'm going to use this to just show you how depth of field works in Daz Studio. If we select the camera view and go into a rendered mode, you'll see at the moment everything from the foreground to the background is perfectly in focus. You can see the edges of the cube and the edges of the sphere are just as focused. If I select the camera and pull up its parameters, you'll see at the moment depth of field is turned off. If I turn depth of field on, you'll see the immediate difference is it appears to be focused here at the base of the sphere, where everything in the background is fairly blurry. Now at the moment it's very blurry, um, and that is um, can be changed by these parameters here. Dare, Stu Dare Studio basically uses the focus distance, which is the actual distance to the, the point of focus and the f-stop uh, determines how narrow or wide the area of focus is. So you'll see if I change this f-stop to 100, certainly the items in the background are slightly more in focus, uh, where the focus is still exactly on here, but we, we still have a bit of blurring, but it's not as bad as, as it was before. So basically, the closer you get to zero with the f-stop, the narrower that area of focus is and obviously having an f-stop too low uh, just doesn't give a very good effect at all. For the examples that I'm going to use with our camera follow fo focus script I'm going to use a f-stop of 100 just because it gives an, a nice background blur and a nice foreground uh, focus rather than the default which is 22. I just feel that's a little bit too much. Okay, so that's why I'm going to be using the, the amount of 100. Um, let's have a look at how this looks if we go from above. So you'll see what Daz Studio adds if you enable the uh, color focus, is it adds a couple of indicators. Now the first indicators are these two planes that it, it draws on the camera and those planes are basically the area that's in focus so you'll see by changing the f-stop uh, you can actually change how wide or narrow that area of focus is the other option is your focal distance and that is designated by that little cross there in the center and by moving that around you can shift the focal distance along the depth of the camera so that's basically how day studio uh, handles it and now let's get into what our script can do. Okay, so for the script you'll see I have a fairly similar scene set up with the, the sphere, the cube and the cylinder. Uh, the only difference is you'll see I am animating that sphere to go in between the cube and, and uh, cylinder and I'm also animating the camera. So if I go to the camera view, you'll see the camera is going to like chase through. It moves forward slightly, moves backwards, and then lifts up slightly as that ball goes back to its original position. Now if we were to go into a rendered view now, you would see that everything remains perfectly in focus. And here's a video I created, uh, which just shows that process. You'll see everything remains perfectly in focus the, the whole time, which is obviously not something that we, we want. We want to try and create a more realistic looking camera. Okay, so switching back to Day Studio, let's go back to our smooth shaded view. And we're going to try the various options. First of all, before we actually do that, let's just go to our camera and just put the depth of field on and see what that's going to do for us. Yeah, you'll see with the depth of field on, the sphere at the moment is almost in focus. 
our f stop is set to 22 so the the field of focus is is very narrow uh, but you'll see if we scroll through our animation you'll see it basically stays at that same area of focus right at the back there here's a video of the process so you'll see it just stays out of focus because it's focused on that area right there at the back okay so let's get back to a quicker view let's run our script now to run our script uh, you have to select two items you need to select the camera that you want into effect and then you need to select the target um, the way to select multiple options in Dash Studio on a Mac is the command key, holding the command key down as you left click. And on a PC, it's the control key. So I'm going to, so I don't have anything selected. I'm going to select the camera, followed by the sphere, because that's what I'm wanting to focus. And then we can run our script. And you'll see our script says, the camera named camera will be targeting the object named sphere, which is pretty much exactly what we want. Our animation selection, we're going to do it across the entire range, but you do have options of current frame, play range, full range, or a custom range. For now, we're going to do it across the full range, and I'm going to turn off these options uh, for now because we're not going to use them. So the only option I'm going to do is keep camera focused on target. And you'll see I've got the depth of field set at 100 um, and that's that relates to your f-stop so depth of field I've set to 100 uh, if I was to reset it you see it's going to just reset it back to that that default but as I showed you in the previous example 100 just uh, looks a lot better for what we're going for all right so the only option I really have there is keep camera focused and the depth of field we process and nothing seems to have happened, but what you'll notice is the depth of field has been turned on. Your f-stop has been set to 100, and there is a focal distance there. And you'll notice if we scroll through our animation, you'll notice this focal distance changes. So basically what the script has done is it worked out at every frame what the focal distance needs to be to keep this item perfectly in focus. Let's have a video of how that looks. Okay, you'll see the ball is perfectly in focus now if I pause it just there you'll see there's your area of focus there while your background is nicely out of focus it's going to another spot in the animation just to show you uh, how about there okay that's a good example you can see this area here is perfectly in focus the edge of the ball is nicely in focus and you can see in the background there that cube is really out of focus there's a tiny little bit of that cylinder there so that's pretty much what we wanted to achieve okay back to their studio okay i'm going to just undo just to get back to our original uh, situation again and this time i'm going to run it with slightly different options so still with camera selected as item one remember camera one and the item you want to focus on I'm going to run our script again and this time I'm going to enable the option to keep camera aimed at target because you'll notice at the moment the the target goes off off screen for a while so we we kind of lose it so now we're going to run the option of keeping the aim uh, keeping the camera aimed at a target so if we process that again now you'll see what happens is that camera is now following that that target I'll show you with the video you'll see we've still got the depth of field perfect the item is in focus nicely but the camera is now actually following the object but something you'll notice is if I turn on a center cross there you'll notice that that ball is exactly in the center of the screen, uh, which might be the, the, the option that you're wanting to go for. Um, in our case, we're wanting to try some, something slightly more natural, because that's not actually a natural uh, camera motion to keep, an option, so, to keep the object so perfectly in, in the center. So we're gonna try something else. 
So back in Daz Studio, I'm going to undo that camera photo, fo uh, follow focus again. And I'm going to, with those two options still selected, I'm going to run it again. And now I'm going to add the option for lazy aiming. Now what lazy aiming does is it takes a little bit longer to follow the path of the object. So you'll see as it follows the object, if the object moves quickly to the left, it will slowly catch up. As the object changes position, it'll slowly catch up again. And you'll see the difference, I'll show you in the video, the difference is quite remarkable. Uh, where now the object is still being followed by the camera, it never actually goes off the, the, camera's, um, the camera's view, but because the camera is slightly delayed, uh, slightly lag in the object, it, it comes across as more natural. You'll see if I turn on that center cross again there, you can see how it no longer remains exactly in the middle. Uh, the camera sort of like chases it and comes across a lot more natural. So to sum up, camera follow focus gives you the option of automatically having your camera follow a subject, um, whether it's um, directly in the center or with the la lazy aiming option. And it also has the option of keeping the camera perfectly focused uh, on any object in the scene. Thanks for listening. Cheers.